My name is Thais Gibson. I am a coach and counselor and founder of the Personal Development School, and I create daily videos on YouTube here all about the subconscious mind, integrated attachment theory, and how to thrive in relationships in the shortest period of time possible. If you're enjoying these videos and want to like, share, and subscribe, it of course helps the algorithm so, so much. And if you hit the notification bell, you won't miss any of our daily videos. So in this video, I want to talk about the fear of being too much and uncovering the wounding from childhood that created this. And my goal for you in this video is to have a better understanding of why this comes up for you, why you may have a sense of shame around the idea of being too much, and what you can do about it. So first and foremost, this usually is the result of having parents as a child that were either overwhelmed themselves perhaps emotionally unavailable or dismissive. And so what you have to recognize and what's actually really important to recognize is that probably the times where you were told things like calm down, quiet down, you're too much, this is too much, shh, stop. You know, when you're constantly told these different things and you're made to feel like you are over the top, you were probably actually attempting to create bids for connection and attention towards your parents or caregivers at the times that you were then told to calm down or that you're too much. In other words, if you were sort of expressing these over-the-top behaviors of being really loud or rambunctious or, you know, raising your voice or flapping around your hands or whatever it might have been that was told to be too much, the underlying reason that you were probably doing that in the first place was because you were a little bit starved for connection or for attention and presence from your parents and caregivers. And so this was an attempt to get their connection, get their attention, bring that attention on to you. So in the moment, your relationship to doing those things is actually you trying to communicate a need, but not having better tools or a better way of addressing that. So then when that need um, or that attempt to make that bid for connection is then met with some form of rejection or even indirect shaming, it will cause you to take on that shame and internalize that shame. And essentially what's going on is that this need for attention and connection is then, cre it, it creates this internalized dynamic of feeling like, okay, something's wrong with me then as I am, because I can't get my needs by playing small. I can't get my needs by making myself bigger or trying to do more things to get attention. So it just must be me. There must be something about me deep down where I'm just effective or something's wrong with me and I'm not able to get my needs met. Now, this may not stop you from trying other ways, right? And, and if there's this constant attempt to get that connection and then this constant overwhelm from your parents or emotional distancing from your parents or shaming from your parents, then you are going to internalize a lot of these different feelings and dynamics as you being too much, something is wrong with you at your core, that you're just too much. Now, this, of course, isn't me sitting here in this video saying, oh, parents are bad, <laughs> right? Like, Parents we know are doing the absolute best they can with what's available to them at, at the time. And, you know, a lot of times parents have multiple jobs and then our parents or both parents are working full time and then come home to maybe lots of kids and lots of responsibilities. And so it's very easy for parents to be overwhelmed or to have moments of emotional unavailability. But when there is a constant and when a child who can't um, and doesn't have the capacity to communicate their needs by saying, hello, parent, you know, I, I'm not getting my needs met by you for presence, attention, and connection. Could we create a pocket of 15 minutes of quality time so we can better connect and I can feel like my cup is full from you? You know, the child can't do that, nor is it their responsibility to do that. And it's not a, a parent's responsibility to be perfect, but you can easily see how this dynamic could unfold. And then a child could internalize that shame as, oh my gosh, I'm over the top. Something's wrong with me. I'm just too much. Now, what we'll see if somebody has this expression of this wounding in their adult lives is that they often feel ashamed of themselves at their core. They can be ashamed for showing the vulnerable parts of themselves to other people. They can be ashamed for expressing their needs or getting too excited about things in front of other people that they 
care about or trying to build too much connection too soon with people and then feeling like, oh my gosh, I overshared or I said too much or I opened up too quickly. I'm too much again. Or they can feel like nobody's ever going to be able to give me what I need. I'm just too much as a, as a person. And it can create a lot of these self-defeating kind of coping mechanisms and ideas about themselves in a relationship. But all of these things are able to be changed, okay? So the opposite of shame is often self-acceptance. And when we are in a space where we are self-shaming, because just so you know, and just so this is really clear, because it's probably the most important part of this video, if you were made to feel like you were too much as a child because you had parents that couldn't really meet your needs, and so you tried even harder and then your needs got met even less, you know, in this sort of cycle that we're talking about, it doesn't ever mean that there was anything wrong with you. It just means that you got conditioned with this concept or idea that you were too much because of the circumstances that you were involved in. Now, the too much feeling about yourself is not objective. It is subjective, right? It was the way you interpreted your environment and your circumstances. And so we end up through that self-interpretation. The only way that that is being carried with us into our adult lives, into our adult relationships and experiences is if we kept that concept alive this whole time by refeeding it. Neural pathways, they atrophy over time. They don't stay alive unless you're pouring into them. In other words, for you to still feel like too much all this time later, if this was something that happened to you in childhood, you had to keep telling yourself this thing over and over again. In other words, you kept self-shaming this entire time. You kept telling you, you were too much, you were too much. You're being embarrassing, quiet down. Oh my gosh, you're over the top. You became your parent that did this in the relationship to yourself. And that's what's kept this pattern and this feeling of shame alive. Now, what the opposite would be of this self-shaming and how we could reprogram this concept or idea is more consistent self-acceptance that we feed into instead of self-shaming. Because when we are firing and wiring neural pathways over here that are conducive to acceptance, which is in direct opposition to self-shame. So what you can do if you want to overcome this idea of you being too much is actually write out a list and audit in the different areas of your life, in your career, with money, friendships, romantic relationships, family relationships, at the gym, in your physical area of life, in your hobbies. Like You can just take a look at your whole life and ask yourself, where do I still shame myself for being too much? Because in essence, I am keeping this wounding alive. And how can I be more accepting of myself instead so I can feed into this idea that I'm a human being and I have needs and it's okay to have needs and I can communicate my needs more directly so I'm easier to get these needs seen and met and I don't have to rely on these indirect strategies perhaps of, of gaining attention. But even if I do do these things indirectly to gain attention, whatever it might be for you, right? That makes me a human who wants connection and attention. And there's nothing wrong with that, right? I'm allowed to want those things as a human being who's wired for attachment. So I have some exciting news, which is that we are doing $1,000 off of our lifetime membership sale to the personal development school, which means you get access to literally everything at PDS for your entire rest of your life. Essentially that entails all of our different courses you have lifetime access to, I do four live webinars a week, every single week. You can access them ongoing and you get access to all of our daily community events. So I'd love to see you on the other side and you can access it by using the link in the description box below. So the more we can increase our self-acceptance and really up the ante there and leverage repetition and emotion as a part of reconditioning our subconscious mind, and we can divest from this constant becoming our parents in the relationship to ourselves because we keep feeding this idea to us. Oh, I'm too much. Oh, this is embarrassing. If we stop shaming ourselves and instead practice more self-acceptance and more communication of our needs to people directly, we are actually going to be able to recondition this entire neural network of this self-concept that is no longer serving us. So I hope this makes a whole lot of sense. If you enjoyed this video and want to do an even deeper dive, you can actually, um, 
uh, check out for free for seven days, our overcoming chronic self-shame and self-guilt course um, for free for seven days. If I didn't say that already, using the link in the description down below, it will actually give you access to our um, all access course pass. You can check out any course at PDS for seven days for free. Um, and um, if you also enjoyed this or enjoying this channel, please consider liking, sharing, and subscribing and hitting the notification bell so you don't miss any of our daily breakthrough videos. Thank you for watching and see you in tomorrow's video.